Hey guys, Lady Liberty Stacker, how are you? I am back. I didn't go away. I've just been busy um, working on my stores, uh, doing family things. I've had a lot of family stuff this month, and just I was just focusing on some of my listings and just different things. And I haven't found much cast iron until just this past week. Again, this is a lot for me. Um, I've been checking, and I, you know, you, you might wonder based on the the um, the title of this video, where's all the cast iron gone? <laughs> you may wonder where I get it. I get it pretty much from antique malls. I get it from estate sales. I get it from Facebook Marketplace. I get it from friends getting stuff. Like some of this came from a friend of mine that I know um, in a local reseller group. Um, I get them from auctions, uh, barn sales, flea markets, you name it. But I've been checking with the antique malls they haven't had a thing. I've been checking, bugging them. Well, not bugging them, but calling them repeatedly, you know, maybe once a week, once every other week to see if they have anything. They haven't had a thing for a month, at least a month. And the flea markets have not been uh, weather cooperative, so I didn't bother wasting the time to go because the vendors don't go if the weather, weather isn't good. So at any rate, I picked up five pieces, two from a, two from, believe it or not, a thrift store, Savers. You can see the price tag there if you're familiar with that. And the other three from a friend. So without further ado, uh, we'll get into what I got. And I'm also going to give you an update on the skillet that I've been working on. Um, for the most part, I have everything else up except for the one that was cracked. And I decided to keep the lid on that. It's a chicken fryer. And this is a gorgeous lid. It's an unmarked Wagner gorgeous piece and I decided just to keep the lid it's, I think it's a number nine it'll work great for some of my, my cast iron pieces I could sell it I may sell it but right for right now I'm gonna keep it but anyway I have had a hard time getting cast iron to this recently so I will give you an update on this piece that I've had for a while so we're gonna move it over here and we're gonna move these pieces over here and I'm gonna have to set the camera down that way you can see everything. And we're going to go ahead and move this guy over here so you can see. Uh, so that was part of the deal, uh, the Dutch oven. I'm not sure what it is exactly. It's got, doesn't spin. You push it and it doesn't move. It sits pretty, pretty level, but I don't want to scrape my top. So I'm going to show it to you. It's got kind of a domed area that comes up. And a straight handle, just to, you know. And that is a lid. There's no bumps or markings or anything like that. It just has a rim to keep it in place. And it's got a nine there, which is about maybe between three quarters of an inch and an inch. And it looks like a nine A. I don't see any other markings at the moment, so it may be unmarked. So I'll put that down. And then this is the bottom part. And it's just covered in a fine layer of rust and actually got it all over my sweatshirt. This stuff is dirty. Ugh. So I'm going to go ahead and put the, the camera down and try to lift it and show it to you. Here it is, if you can see. And then I'm going to flip it over. And it's got a lot of superficial rust on the bottom. It's pretty much flat. Doesn't look like it has any cracks, but I don't know if you guys know what it is, just by looking at this. I hope you can see that there. And it does have like a little assist handle, as most Dutch ovens do. But it is super, super dirty and rusty. And I'm getting ready to sw swap out my lye baths and start new ones. So that's going to go in as soon as I get that done. It's been raining all week. I haven't had a chance to do that either, but I want to get the, this video up so I can go ahead and soak these pieces. All right, first come first. So we have that Dutch oven. My friend just kind of threw that in. Not sure what it is, but it's a number nine. Then at Savers, I saw two skillets kind of sitting kind of just like that. This one has a very smooth surface. It's an unmarked Wagner. It's got here, it's hard to see in camera, it's got six and a half inch skillet and it has a Z there and a Z on the underside of the handle and that's trademark Wagner. 
It's got a little bit of a, a um, edging on the rim there. I don't know what you call that right now, but that's trademark Wagner. So, but anyway, it's a cute little number three. Uh, it's a Wagner. It's got uh, no spin whatsoever. It sits flat. It's a great little cooker, and I may pair it with the next one I'm going to show you. Next one was sitting right underneath it, and I got it at, and I got a discount because I went on a discount day, but it was originally marked at about $8.99. I got it for around six-ish, somewhere in there, but I went to Savers. Savers doesn't have too many, too many cast iron pieces like this, but this is a number five. It's got a little line through it. As soon as I saw the little line through it, I knew exactly what it was. And if you collect cast iron long enough, you'll start to recognize these pieces. It's got small pore spouts, but they're fairly well defined. And you flip over the back, it's got a number five right there with an anther sand, and, or an underscore, sorry, an underscore, and it's on its side. And I instantaneously knew, but it is a vol rath, an unmarked vol rath. Most of them are unmarked, and it's got the nice ribbed handle. Smooth bottom, I usually see them with a heat ring, but they do have a few with a smooth bottom, which makes it nice for a glass stove top. It does have a little movement, but it doesn't completely spin around, so it worked very well in a glass top, coiled electric, or gas range. But I may pair this, just a little bit of a wobble, not much, probably three or four business cards will stop the movement. I haven't yet verified that, but uh, that's a nice skillet. The next up is a slightly larger. This is from the friend. It is a number six, thin side walls. And if you're an avid collector, you're going to probably guess this is a Griswold. Probably. It's got an assist handle up here, but actually it's referred to as a hinge. And I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. It is a Griswold small logo, number six. And it's a pin number, 2506, because it has a lid that goes with this. They're very hard to find. I'm going to try to find one. Maybe I'll run into one someday uh, for this. But I thought it was interesting. And I, this one here, I offered 30 The guy took it. And this one here I found earlier in the year at a flea market. Never seen anything quite like it before. Didn't know if it was a real deal or not. Looked it up in my book. It is indeed the real deal. It is a real Gris Griswold with the hinge. And they did make a skillet, so when you set this, the uh, skillet down, the, the uh, lid has a little piece that fits in this hinge. And you can lift the lid up, and it stays up in the air like that when you're cooking something. Very, very ultra-convenient, very rare, and they're pricey, as far as I know. But this one here has no movement, no wobble. It's an excellent skillet, and there's a couple of cracks here, I mean, not cracks, a couple of scratches, and I think that's all they are because they do not go through. I'm keeping my fingers crossed on that one. I've had a lot of cracks this year, guys, and I try not to get them. All right, next up is a number 10, and this one, again, has no movement, very, very little wobble. This one I offered a little bit more money for because it was bigger. And he said it was a Griswold. Okay, I'll be right back. Sorry about that, guys. I got a phone call. So, anyways, this is a... Um, you could tell from the writing there, it's a Griswold. It's got a uh, circle, double cross, double circle logo. It's a 10. It's got a heat ring. And from here, it looks like it just says Erie, but I won't know for sure until I get it into lie and get it stripped. But uh, this one here, I got to thinking, you can kind of see it. It's very hard to see it on the video, but it's a slant. It's a large block, large slant a logo, large block slant logo. <laughs> it's been a long day. Anyway. That's what this is, and these go for really decent money. This one will, this one is worth about 250 to 300, give or take, depending on the condition. Um, it sits flat as long as it's got no cracks. It doesn't spin as long as it uh, it cleans up beautifully. It should be just fine. So we're gonna go ahead and put all these guys here. So three of these were from a friend. 
and two of them are from the thrift store. And this one is a Wagner. I'll go ahead and put it on the stove. And I gotta finish seasoning it. This is after two coats of Easy Beasy seasoning. This is a Wagner Sydney L model 1062A with the heat ring. This is the predecessor of the more modern Wagner that was made in the, uh, from like 1939 to 19. 45, I think, somewhere in there. This one was earlier. Got to double check um, with castironcollector.com. And just a quick note, guys. Anybody that wants cast iron identification, and I've had to record this a couple of times because of interruptions. I may have already said it. But Facebook has a group called Cast Iron Identification. That's all you have to do, uh, key in your search. And when you get to the group, just ask to be a member, and they will approve you. And then you can post pictures if you're not sure what it is, and they can tell you. That's what I'm going to do with this Dutch oven. I don't know if anybody watching the video is going to know what that is, but that's what I'm definitely going to do because somebody in those groups will know what you have. Uh, there's a lot of knowledge in those groups, so I don't. Uh, I think they're they're wonderful. So, at any rate, this is a Wagner Sydney O number twelve, and this one is worth quite a bit as well, but it needs. I need to, uh, it's so heavy, I've just got to gradually lift it up. And that is the underside, very smooth. It has a little movement, not a lot, but it will make a great skillet, especially for a gas range, coiled electric, but it will work for an electric stovetop as well. Uh, just heat it up gradually and just make sure that it is nice and uh, warm and ready to go. But this one will get a, a coat or two more until I'm satisfied, but it's, it's turned out really, really, really nice. So, at any rate, uh, this is what I got for you guys today. I do appreciate your giving me a thumb up. You want to see more videos like this, leave a question or comment below. Um, my email address is in the description if you have any questions or want my store link. Uh, people can reach me there. I'm LadyLibertyStacker at gmail.com. Um, anyway, anyway, it's nice to be back. You'll probably be watching this on Saturday after I've had a chance to edit it and get it up. Um, but anyway, I'm not going anywhere. I've just been kind of busy. So hope you all have a nice. Uh, hope you all have a nice weekend. And thanks for watching. And keep safe.